eukaryotic cells. In this lecture, you will learn about the eukaryotic cell. I will briefly discuss their evolutionary relationship to the bacteria and archaea before moving on to review eukaryotic cellular organization. Next, you'll learn about the endomembrane system of organelles involved in protein production, as well as some of the other organelles found in animal and plant cells. Recall the phylogenetic tree of life. Prokaryotic cells are found in the bacteria and archaea domains and organisms of the eukaryota or eukarya domain are of course made up of eukaryotic cells. In this representation of the phylogenetic tree of life, you can see how the common ancestor evolved into two separate branches of organisms. The archaea and eukaryote are along the same branch, which means they are more closely related to each other than they are to the organisms in the bacterial domain. Because we have the technology to sequence the genes of organisms, this version of the tree of life is grouped into these three domains based on the genetic similarity of their 16S ribosomal RNA gene. So when this ribosomal RNA gene is sequenced, organisms can be grouped based on how closely related they are genetically. In this figure, Organisms have been grouped based on DNA sequence similarity, and each one of these sequences are from a different organism. For example, boxed in red at the top is the original sequence that all other sequences are being compared to. Other groups or branches emerge as the sequences differ, which are denoted as different colors within the sequences. Similar to the phylogenetic tree of life, all of the organisms here have originated from a common ancestor, which evolved into two branches of organisms. The branch of organisms on top further evolved to result in a third branch. The closer the branches are, the more closely related the organisms are. The eukaryotic microbes that we study in microbiology are the protozoa, which are unicellular organisms. Some protozoa can grow and form colonies like bacteria. Fungi and algae are also microbes studied in this course. And they may be unicellular or form colonies like bacterial cells and may also form multicellular structures that are macroscopic, visible to the naked eye. Helminths, which are the parasitic worms and arthropods, insects that transfer microbes from one organism to another, like mosquitoes, for example. The helminths and arthropods are multicellular, except during their reproductive stages when they are unicellular. The eukaryotic cell is organized much like the prokaryotic cell. Both cell types have external appendages and the ability to produce a glycocalyx. Some eukaryotic cells have a cell wall, but it is composed of different material than the prokaryotic cell wall, and you should know the difference. The internal structures are more extensive and complex in the eukaryotic cell as you'll see in the next slides. This is a composite eukaryotic cell, which means all of the structures you can find in a eukaryotic cell are included here, but depending on the type of cell, you may not find all of these structures. The central dogma of molecular biology states that information flows in one direction, from DNA to RNA to proteins. DNA contains the genetic instructions to transcribe RNA, and then the RNA is translated into proteins. In eukaryotic cells, DNA is located in the nucleus where transcription is performed, but the ribosomes are located in the cytoplasm, 
This presents a small challenge because the RNA must leave the nucleus to reach the ribosome before it can be translated into proteins. Recall that proteins have four levels of structure. Amino acids are joined together on the ribosome to produce the primary protein structure. The primary structure folds upon itself to form the secondary structures, alpha helices, or beta sheets. The amino acids further interact to continue folding and form a globular 3D tertiary structure. Some tertiary structures act alone and others interact with one or more tertiary structures to form quaternary structures. The nucleus is the control center of the cell that houses the DNA, which is the genetic information necessary for all cellular functions. The nucleus also contains the nucleolus, which is important for production of the ribosome. Chromatin fibers are present to help the cell compact DNA to prepare for cell division. The nucleus is enclosed by a nuclear envelope that has pores to allow transport of molecules in and out of the, nucle of the nucleus. The cell requires many different types of proteins to keep the cell functioning properly and is always replacing those that have been degraded. In the nucleus, the purple structure pictured here, DNA is transcribed into RNA. Because the ribosomes are located in the cytoplasm, the RNA must leave the nucleus through pores in the nuclear envelope to get to the ribosomes. The ribosomes are located just outside of the nucleus, ready to translate the RNA into proteins. Ribosomes are made up of ribosomal RNA and protein, and these structures are the sites where proteins are made. There are ribosomes that are free-floating in the cytoplasm and other ribosomes that are closely associated with the rough endoplasmic reticulum organelle, which is located just outside of the nucleus. The rough endoplasmic reticulum collects the proteins that are produced by the ribosomes and protein folding occurs inside of the hollow spaces of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. When the proteins are completely folded, they are packaged into transport vesicles made of the membrane of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and sent to the next organelle, the Golgi apparatus. When the protein reaches the Golgi apparatus, also known as the processing and distribution center, the proteins are processed into their final fully functional version. The finished proteins are sorted. Again, they are packaged into transport vesicles that are made of the membrane of the Golgi apparatus and sent to their final destination, in this case, outside of the cell. This slide summarizes the endomembrane system. It has been named as such because the production of proteins occurs inside a system of membranes. There are enzymes in the cytoplasm that would degrade the protein if it were to come in contact with them. For this reason, the protein is protected inside of membranes at each step until it is complete. This overview also shows that lysosomes are produced in the same manner through the endomembrane system. Lysosomes are membrane-bound sacs that contain digestive enzymes. Enzymes are just one type of protein, so the enzymes are made in the same way as other proteins are produced, but they remain packaged until they need to digest nutrients, foreign material that has entered the cell through vacuoles, or until they need to degrade damaged organelles. After the contents of the vacuoles are degraded, the cell uses the molecules it needs and the remaining waste is expelled from the cell.
the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is smooth because it does not have ribosomes associated with its surface. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for the production of lipids and steroid hormones like testosterone and estrogen. You will find lots of smooth endoplasmic reticulum in liver cells because they aid in breaking down glycogen into glucose molecules that cells can use for energy. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. They provide the cell with energy in the form of ATP, and the mitochondria are the sites where all metabolic reactions occur in eukaryotic cells. As mentioned previously, it is thought that the mitochondria were once prokaryotic cells that formed a symbiotic relationship with the larger prokaryote. We can see evidence here by looking at the inner and outer membrane, which is very similar to gram-negative cells. Another piece of evidence is the single circular piece of mitochondrial DNA that is also similar to the DNA in prokaryotic cells. Both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells alike have a cytoskeleton but the cytoskeleton of eukaryotic cells is much more complex. There are several types of fibers of different sizes involved. Microfilaments are the smallest in diameter and function in cell motility. Maintenance of cell shape, as well as maintaining the structure of the cell. The intermediate filaments are mostly involved in stabilizing or anchoring organelles in place so they don't move. They also play a role in maintaining cell shape. The microtubules are the largest in diameter. They are hollow tubes of protein that make up the internal structures of cilia and flagella, structures that are in constant motion and that must be strong enough to withstand repeated movement. Cilia and flagella are very different structures but both allow the cells to move. Cilia are usually found all around the perimeter of the cell surface. They move back and forth rapidly and allow for backward and forward movement of the cell. And they also play a role in bringing nutrients into the cell, especially in single-celled organisms. In eukaryotes, flagella are usually a single extension instead of the variations found in prokaryotes. They are also 10 times thicker than the prokaryotic flagella. The structure and manner in which the eukaryotic flagella moves is also very different. You can click on the links to the videos to see the differences between cilia and flagellar movement. The internal structure of the flagella and cilia are composed of microtubules. Pictured on the lower right, are microscopy images of the internal structure of the cilia, which shows the arrangement of the microtubules. Not all microbes have a glycocalyx, but if present, it is the outermost layer covering the cell. These structures are composed mostly of polysaccharides and are either of the capsule or slime layer type. Capsules tend to be thicker, rigid, and smooth, and slime layers are much thinner, loose, and, well, slimy. The extra layer helps protect the cell from desiccation and also protects some types of organisms from phagocytosis during a host infection. These structures allow cells to attach to surfaces and also to other cells. Plant cells are also eukaryotic cells and have most of the same organelles as other eukary eukaryotic organisms. You will find three unique structures in plant cells, the cell wall, chloroplasts, and a large central vacuole. Chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. 
the chloroplast contains chlorophyll pigments that capture the light energy of the sun in order to produce glucose and other carbohydrates. Oxygen is produced as a byproduct. The large central vacuole of plant cells is 90 to 98% water. Recall that animal cells are about 70% water. The central vacuole contains enzymes that are involved in metabolism and digestion. For this reason, plant cells lack lysosomes because their digestive enzymes are contained in the large central vacuole. The central vacuole is also responsible for pH balance of the cell because it contains buffers. As you may guess, it plays a role in water maintenance of the cell and it also contains nutrients in waste products. The cell wall of plants is located outside of the cell membrane and gives the plant cell all of its structural strength. Plants can't swim away from predators, so they must have extra protection. The cell wall is composed mostly of cellulose. Recall from the biomolecules lecture that cellulose is a polysaccharide of glucose molecules, but due to the type of bond formed between the glucose molecules, humans cannot digest cellulose. We rely on our gut microbes to partially digest this cellulose for us.